Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is God's name. Let us worship God, for God is our Maker and Redeemer. From generation to generation, God gives mercy.
be seated. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen before you. For the darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Come, Lord Jesus, our light and our salvation. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. to Westminster Presbyterian Church on this holy Christmas Eve night. We welcome you and pray you will find the peace of Jesus Christ in this place. I realize that some of you are from the East Coast, the West Coast, South Carolina, Omaha, all kinds of places. Welcome home. For many of you, this was a church you were raised in and your extended family. We welcome each and every one. We ask you to sign the registration pad and please pass it down your aisle to register your attendance this evening. Blessings to you.
With confidence in the mercy of God, let us pray. Generous God, you give us the greatest gift of all, yourself, but often we find it hard to take notice. We are caught up with our own gifts, given and received. Forgive us, generous God, for the casual way we treat your gift of love, cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. Amen. God so loved the world that God gave God's only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So friends, believe and share the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation.
The nativity narrative of our Lord Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of Luke. Listen for God's word. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy to all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Boys and girls, young and old, this evening, I would like to share with you the story of the night that my child was born in Bethlehem of Judea. But I have to start a long time ago. When we were just children, my father and Joseph's father decided that we should be married. And so we had an arranged marriage situation. And when I got to be a teenager, I was old enough to get married. And so they signed the papers 
of betrothal. It means we were officially engaged. And usually the engagement would take about a year while the groom went out and built a house. And Joseph was a carpenter, so you can imagine the dreams of this bride, of the most beautiful home. I was busy preparing for our home too. I was dyeing cloth and, and I made my wedding dress and hung it up on the wall because I could hardly wait until that night. And Joseph would come and surprise me. And we would go through the streets of Nazareth and it would be like a parade, a celebration. And he would take me to our new home and people would treat us like kings and queens for a whole week. Oh, the dreams of a young girl. But you know plans can change in an instant. And that's what happened to me. I had a visit from the angel Gabriel, who said, Ave Maria, greetings Mary. You have been highly favored, and the Lord is with you. Highly favored? Me? What could that mean? But then the angel explained that I would have a son, and I was to name him Jesus, the Lord saves, and he would be the son of the Most High God, and his kingdom would have no end. I would have a son. Well, it didn't exactly make sense. You know, I was, had, had not known a man, and Joseph and I, why we would never break the Jewish laws of betrothal. But then the angel explained, it takes the Holy Spirit who will be involved in your child's life from the moment of conception. Well, that makes sense. It takes three to have a, a baby. Every Jew knows that, a man, a woman, and the Holy Spirit. But the angel said, no, Mary, this will be God's son. God will be his father, and he will be called the son of God. Then the angel explained to me, my Aunt Elizabeth, you know the barren one who lives over in the hills of Judea? In her old age, she's pregnant. And I just thought, if I could get to Elizabeth, she'd make some sense out of all of this. She would help me. And then I thought, oh, Joseph, he's a fine man. And, and the people in the village, the people that knew me my whole life. See, I knew that the penalty for being pregnant, being found with child, and unmarried was very severe. It could even mean stoning. But I also knew what I had been taught since I was a child. I was taught that obedience to God is the most important thing ever. At all cost, to be obedient to God. And so I said to the angel, let it be as as you have said, and I meant it. But I immediately headed off to the hill country to see my Aunt Elizabeth, and when I walked into her home, she said with a loud voice, Yulon Gemene, which said, Mary, you are blessed among women. She was confirming what the angel told me. Oh. All of a sudden, the child in her womb leaped for joy. Here we were, one way too young to have a baby and one way too old to have a child. And the Holy Spirit helping us to understand what was coming ahead, preparing us for the future. And then Elizabeth took my hand and she said, Mary, Mary, Makaria, which means you are blessed because you believe God.
Macaria Mary. Well, all of a sudden, my soul exploded with joy and words and praise to God. And I realized, I knew that I knew that my child would usher in a revolution like none other. I knew there would be a moral revolution. There would come a time when it would begin in everyone's heart. And there would be no pride. It would be stripped away because we would see ourselves for who we truly are. And eventually he would usher in a social revolution where the mighty would be brought down and the humble would be exalted. No more labels, no more class, social orders, prestige. We would all see ourselves before Almighty God as precious children of God. And then he would still usher in an economic revolution where there will come a day, there will come a day, the hungry will be fed and the rich will be sent away empty. And your value will not depend on what you've acquired. And you dare not have too much if others do not have enough. For whom much is given, much will be expected. So I knew that my son would usher in this kind of revolution. The whole world would change because of him. I knew that. Well, I stayed with Elizabeth three months, and it was so valuable. It helped me for what was yet to come. But I had to go back to Nazareth. And when I got back, Joseph had been visited by the angel of the Lord. And Joseph didn't want a divorce. He wanted to marry. And so we did. Oh, Joseph was such a fine man. But Joseph was also quite protective. He was worried because he knew that there could be some cruelty in our village. And so when he got a, a notice that he had to go register for a census in his ancestral hometown, which would be Bethlehem, 80 miles away, he decided I had to go with him, even though I was great with child. His protection was so important. And so it was a three-day journey, and we traveled, and there were inns along the way, but the inns were not for us to stay. They were strictly fodder for our animals and fire for our cooking. So we had to bring all provisions everything. And we get to Bethlehem. Oh, it was so busy. The streets were bustling. Joseph couldn't find a place to stay. And suddenly, it is time for our baby to be delivered. And he found a quiet stable. And our baby was born. And I had brought swaddling cloth and wrapped him, and Joseph found a manger, just a feeding trough that we placed our baby in that night. What a precious night. And that very night, we had visitors. There were, there were some shepherds outside of Bethlehem on the hillside, and the, the angel of the Lord visited them and told them that the Messiah was born that night and that they would find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And then a whole host of angels said, glory to God. Can you imagine? They were so afraid. But they came to see the baby. God sent the first birth announcement to shepherds lowly shepherds who couldn't stay ritually pure because the sheep, the little lambs, demanded them, so much of them 24 hours a day. They were not considered clean, worthy. 
but they got the first birth announcement. And it makes me wonder, you know, those, those shepherds outside of Bethlehem, could they have been the shepherds that took care of the little lambs that were sacrificed in the temple every morning and every night? Those little lambs had to be perfect, unblemished lambs. Could that have been the same shepherds that were caring for the temple lambs to be sacrificed? Those shepherds who got to be the first to see the Lamb of God who sacrificed his very life for us? Could it be? Oh, may we have a heart to understand and to believe. Makaria, Makaria indeed. Amen. seated. If the ushers would come forward to receive our Christmas offering, I am thrilled to tell you that in the last few weeks, the response of the congregation to the mission and ministry needs of Westminster Church has been overwhelming. We are now within $7,000 of meeting our annual budget with offerings tonight and on Sunday and I'm sure we will get there.
we dedicate our gifts before God. I have to say, Calvin, we should have you as an usher every time his plate is overflowing. <laughs> Goodness, let us say things. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift and for the giver. May it be used for your purpose, for your kingdom's purpose always. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. My name is Sarah Baltensberger, one of your deacons, and I am honored to serve families from Fredrickson to Gatula. Please pray with me. Lord, as we celebrate the season of Christ's birth, there's nothing that stands brighter than hope, the thrill of hope, the excitement that no matter what life brings us, we can still have hope because of that night divine, that night when our precious Savior was born in a stable. Father God, we thank you and praise you today for the miracle of your son's birth. Thank you for bringing joy to the whole world. Thank you for giving us the assurance that because you came to us in the form of a human, we who believe in Jesus can know with absolute certainty that we'll spend eternity with you. We thank you, Lord, for the many reasons we have been given a Merry Christmas, and we rejoice for each blessing, a new life, a new love, a home, a job, new opportunities, second chances, and more. Thank you, Father, for spiritual leaders and faith-filled friends who keep encouraging us when we are close to giving up. When doubts fill our minds, your comfort gives us renewed hope and cheer. We know when we focus our hearts and minds, we will find overflowing comfort and joy through you and your precious Son, Christ Jesus. Fill us with your blessings as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, go forth knowing and believing this holy night we are blessed, blessed indeed, Makaria. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit reside with each one of us now and forever.